welcome to Pro Modeler. I'm Philip Florey. This particular kit we're going to be doing this time is the actual uh, De Havilland Mosquito made by Tamiya. Now, for me personally, it's quite a journey on this one because this particular kit is the first one I made of Tamiya's when I came back to the hobby. Um, went into my local model shop, had a look around, and then all of a sudden came across this kit, thought a little bit different, had a look in the box. Obviously, you see the difference with the sprues and things like that, and immediately it sort of jumped out of me. Putting it together, considering all I'd done before was the sort of Bleachery Rebel and Airfix kits back in the day, doing this particular one was like a breath of fresh air it goes together so very very well hardly any filler needed certainly no massive amounts of gluing going on like I've been doing in the previous kits so coming back to this one is sort of an old faithful so let's have a look what we get in the box okay so over in the box let's have a look what we get in inside the box usual thing um, instructions we'll start with those first as you can imagine if you've ever worked with um, Tamiya before you'll understand the type of layout they are usually very very good it gives you all the color call outs as you go through obviously using Tamiya paints um, I'm lucky I've got the set here um, so obviously you can follow them through quite closely they do tend to be very very accurate kits so you don't have to worry too much about the color call outs um, certainly at this stage one thing to think about though is quite a nice touch just down here you've got your a b or c version of your aircraft you're going to do it's quite important to pick this out because they're different types of aircraft obviously you've got a night fighter um, and a day bomber and a reconnaissance aircraft for a change i'm going to be working on the reconnaissance one which is i do believe on the box here we go which is going to be in the blue now the thing with this blue is it's a monotone color all over what type of thing. I've done a lot of camo work in previous builds um, leading up to this particular build of showing doing freehand camo and different things you can do with camo pants and things like that. So I thought I'd work with something, a prop aircraft in a monotone color so we can show about weathering it and various things like that. So it's something we're gonna be looking at quite heavily that we'll move on to. One little thing I do, run through the build and have a look around and the thing is like part eight we need to open up some holes which are quite important to do so i've masked it with a little asterisk circled it remember to do it otherwise you tend to get going with these builds forget the sort of where you are and uh, before you know it you forgot to open up holes and things like that so i tend to mark them on the instructions same down here we've got a, a camera in um, obviously we don't need to do the bombs because we're going to have the bomb bay doors shut and i do believe there we go We've marked it in here for C because obviously we're going to have it with the Bombay doors closed so we don't have to put any of the detail inside the Bombay which is a real shame because there are some lovely little details. I'll show you about it um, and obviously painting fuel tanks and things like that they're all there on the inside. So that's why we've marked it with C. It's going to be the photo reconnaissance bird um, so with the Bombay doors shut. So I've marked them all the places which are especially of interest to me. Um, next up we've got a colour sheet, a uh, black and white sheet here showing the markings uh, and the placements for the decals and things like that on this one and it shows it obviously this is the green grey over grey scheme or we've got the black and the night fighter colour uh, over the green and grey as well and then we've got our colour down here just because well it's all one colour and it's not very interesting um, they haven't done it too well. One little thing is we do have in the bottom of the box here Quite a nice touch. This is a one-to-one -one scale uh, to the model uh, of the actual camo pattern. So if you wanted to, you could photocopy this, cut out the pattern and use them for templates for spraying on the, cam the camo pattern. And because it's one-to-one -one scale, you don't have to do any sort of jigging around and things. Just photocopy it a couple of times. You can cut them up, stick them on with a bit of blue tack underneath, put these on top and spray over the top and it will give you a nice fix down onto those. So that's a nice little touch from both. So he says, grabbing his knife. As you can imagine, these are all in little separate bags, each sprue. This particular kit, there's obviously different versions of the actual kit. We can get various to one to our, um, which are sort of um, fighter versions, got a gunner nose. That's why we have a different type of nose in here uh, and a slight different to the bomb bays and bits and pieces like that. So as you can imagine, very, very little in the way of. Um, sink marks uh, and pin marks even though this kit is extremely must be getting on now i'm not going to say how old it is because i'm not 100 percent sure but certainly it has been around quite a long time now uh, but it's one of those all-time great kits um, tammy really worked hard on this one i do believe and they got it right first time and that's why now there isn't any more around we've got <clears throat> Two here, exactly the same, they're mirroring each other, um, so obviously you've got two lots of props, but they're different types. You've got like the paddle blade one here versus the thinner one. Again, check your instructions as you go through. I'll call them out with you for my version, but different versions have different types of props. Right the way through to, we've got the main fuselage section. 
rubber grommets. Keep hold of those, very important. We'll talk about those later. Um, we've got down here, which shows the fuel tank in the bottom. As you can imagine, this kit goes together very, very similar to how the actual aircraft uh, sort of does in real life, the way it goes along, apart from the box section doesn't come up. But they are big one-piece bits. It was made of wood, um, the real aircraft and things. It's, like, it's known as the wooden wonder. Um, so obviously there isn't much in the way of panel line and things like that on the actual kit. Engines themselves, the actual nauticals that show in the holding the engines, again, different types of engines um, for different types of models for this, and they have different engine shrouds. Last but not least over here, we've actually got the main wing section. So as you imagine, one piece top and one piece bottom, going to go together very, very nicely and very easily as well. It's going to be a quick build putting this one together because it, it does go together so very, very well. And there isn't as many, many parts as makes it look. But certainly from the point of view of um, what we're going to be looking at is how to weather the outside of it and how to certainly break up this blue colour that we're going to be using. Last, but no means least, we have the decals, which we have harnesses, which you can actually have. We've got instrument decals um, for actually putting them on. You can sort of bleed them over the top. There's a little technique which I'll show you on this particular build, and obviously all the others. As you can imagine, with Tamiya, they're great in register, very sharp, very little in the way of actual um, problems with silvering and things, because we're going to put on plenty of softener and get these to conform. And also, there's not many lumps and bumps on the actual outside of the aircraft, so it should be all very, very nice. Okay, so starting off this build, um, something a little bit different. Um, we're going to follow it as part of the instructions most of the way. Uh, instead of starting with the cockpit and the usual things like that, we're actually starting with the engines. So these are pretty straightforward. We're just going to snip these out now using the scissors. So we'll just cut those out just like that. Now, the actual um, way this actually fits is that it's quite a nice detailed um, gear set up the way that it all fits in here. So say it's nicely detailed. So it's an area where you know obviously we'll pay a little bit of attention to. So what we'll do we just sand these down. Okay. Now you could open them up and spray them. There is a couple of ejector pin marks right in the middle but to be honest you're not really going to see those so I'm not going to worry about them too much. Taking the Tamiya extra thin what we're going to do is we're going to place together Okay, and we're going to do this from the inside. So, glue just like so, which is folding it around on the inside. Up. Okay, these are the ones on this back one. So, it's very straightforward. The locating pins pretty much have this down pack. So, we just hold that just a sec. Okay, and then we can come along with the rear part. So a bit of a blob and let the capillary action run down and zap it all together. Same thing, it's quite a long brush so it manages to get in there quite well. So there we go, we just pinch those together, hold them together and then you can sort of rock it up and down to line them up to get a nice seam. So it's almost a seamless type of joint to this. Okay, and we're just going to drop a bit in from the outside as well. Okay, so we just hold that a second. And you can pop a peg on it if you wanted to. You can get it to bite on there, that is. Just to hold that one in. Okay, so I've done this one already. What we're going to do, we're going to do the whole of it, bring it all together, and then we can do filling and sanding afterwards. So things like on this nautical, we've got a bit of a joint down here we want to take care of and, and tidying up. As I said, we'll do it all as an afterthought. So at the call out uh, for the instructions, um, it says about putting on the wing. So you've got a little ramp intake just down here. We've put that, installed that one in already. That one's all in there very nicely. So then what we're going to do, we're going to pop in the, the light section. Now you've got the lights to go in here. Now depending on different versions you do in here, you might want to open up these holes. This particular one, because as you say we're doing the reconnaissance version, it doesn't have it. So what we've got here is the light. So taking the clear sprue, which we've got just here, what I've actually done already, I've done the lights. I don't see, uh, I can't see really, probably just about making it up. What I've actually done on the inside in here, there's a little hole. I've used a darker silver in there, and then the rest of it is a bright chrome silver. So, something if you're using um, Tamiya, I've used um, something along the lines of uh, X11 chrome for the outer one, and then probably something like the metal color uh, XF56. 
just for doing that in a bit and it brings those together otherwise you know i tend to use um, citadel colors for these but it's the same type of thing so i've done those and they are dried in already so what we're going to do is just snip them out the sprue okay like so there's one two keeping those nice and safe we can actually install these lights into these holes so then what happens is they show through the underside just like so I'll probably bring you in a little bit closer just in camera can lock in no nope. doesn't want to there we go getting there just about um, but anyway it uh, just shows if I can get it to go we'll be all right why there we go as you can see you get that sort of light bulb type of effect to it working in there so that's nicely done so what you can do you can use a little bit of extra thin and let the capillary action whip around don't touch the underside of it if you move it around it will smear you'll get a fogged up glass effect in there so there we go that's that one in like so so we just stick it over so it's hovering same on the other side so placing the light in Okay, touch to the outside, let it flow in, let it do its bit, and then we are there just like that. So what we can do is we'll mask that up afterwards um, in a moment, but for the moment that's exactly where I want to leave it. Okay, next thing you do, you can obviously pop the top of your wing surface on. So uh, grabbing the right wing. We can put these in. As I said, there is a call out for painting the inside of all of this at the moment, what you'll see in a moment. We're gonna build it as a whole, then we're gonna come back uh, and then take care of it. So what we can do, we're just gonna hold it on this edge, drop of glue all around this area in here. Okay, running down this back part. Plenty of it, hold and pinch, and we just do this inside area first get that one glued into place so what I do a couple of little pegs great things to have and these little rubber feet ones are really handy because they don't slip off so there we go that's that one in so we can just do these inner ones as well we've got touch of glue in these areas I'll just take care of those and we can just pop a bit inside just around the top of that radiator so the radiators glue together. Okay, now for doing leading edges, uh, what I tend to do is hold it up sort of at this angle. Okay, touch the brush to it, and then it'll flow down. If we did it this way, I can come along with a brush, and you put the brush on, sometimes it might run down here, sticks to your fingers, and before you know it, you've got all types of trouble. So doing it this way, and having it at an angle, it just stops it flowing down. Okay, same again. So we're just running out of pegs. So we'll just use one of the old ones. Exactly the same for the rear. And then we're going to do exactly the same for the other wing as well. Okay, so they've dried off a little bit. We can get this one in. So straightforward, as I said, we're going to paint it all afterwards. So don't worry too much. We're just going to come in, pop this in. It's going to sit very nicely. Got a little, little bit of a gap just down here at the back. So what we're gonna do, plenty of extra thin. Glue just going down there and that'll weld that up and take care of that. Okay, and then we can just come along once we're all sitting in nicely and it's, I must admit, a real doddle this one. As I say, it goes together very, very well. So just plenty of glue and let it do all the work. I'm not gonna do glue down here at the rear where the flaps go and um, we're gonna leave them because obviously reality would be there would be a small gap. So there we go, that's those on. And we can just go across the top, a little drop just in the top here, and onto the other side, so that hopefully this will click down on. Okay, just touch more, just to get rid of any little marks, a little bit round the front. And there we go, that one's done. Now we've got this one done over here already. So we have got some little gaps on here, so it's up to you. If you want to do it right now, uh, perhaps pop some filler in, 
which is never a bad thing. So there's two ways of doing filling, okay? We can either use um, something like a squadron putty, which is what we'll do on this one. So if I just use, I tend to use one of the back of one of these, we're just gonna get rid of the old stuff first. I might like, never use the stuff right off the top because it's usually a bit icky. Okay, we just grab a little bit on the bottom and there we go, we can just smooth this in. Plenty of it because obviously it'll shrink back and we can take care of it all later. So we'll just pinch a bit from that. Okay, and you can just pop it on just like this. Just on, and then perhaps if you want to pop a little bit onto this rear part, you can do as well. So we just come along. Just like so. Okay, that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, of course, is to use super glue. Now, good old normal, this is just a medium um, super glue. Okay, and all we're going to do, we just put a blob in the middle. Something like that. Okay, and we just use a cocktail stick because it's disposable. Okay, and we're just going to drag it down the lines. Just like so. And then what you can do, you can give it a squirt of some kicker or activator. Hang it upside down as soon as you squirted it. That way it draws down and will hang down a little bit and dry off and almost instantaneously. Okay, and then you can just grab a tiny bit more. Okay, pluses and minuses against using normal filler and super glue. Okay, so a tiny bit here. Um, the pluses for using a super glue or a CA glue, whichever you want to call it, is it goes off extremely hard, very, very quickly, so you don't have to let it dry or anything like that, okay? The other thing as well, is that um, it's quite easy to sort of get in there, put it in exactly where you want it, because you can use like a cocktail stick, so it's easier to place it. And as I said, dries extremely fast, just like so, just a touch more kicker in here. There we go, job done. Downside to using it, one, it's very, very hard, so it's harder to sand than actual filler. Um, but it's, it's great, because you've got no shrinkage, very, very quick, you can get on and sand it. If it's in a complicated area, it's a bit of a nightmare to get in there. But like now, I can come along with quite a coarse file, like this one, okay? And it's good enough and hard enough to sand already. Yeah, if I was to be on the filler, I can't go near that now for another hour at least. So that is a pluses to something like this. And as I said, no shrinkage, which is a, a real, real bonus. So what I'll do is, I'm not gonna clean that up now, we can leave those, but what we can start doing now is moving on to the actual, um, the actual main part eight if you go through the steps. And what this is, let's pop that lid on so we don't have that everywhere. What this is, is the bottom of the Bombay, uh, as it's going to show, okay? Now you can paint these up, obviously follow your instructions on how to do it, and you'll be absolutely fine. This particular one we're doing, because we said we're doing the recce version, the recon one, it's got the cameras, we don't have to worry about it, uh, because purely um, you don't actually have the Bombay doors open. So what we've done, we've opened up two little holes at the front here, these little ones in here, which make these. The thing is with that, we've got to open them up because the camera's going to attach to it. And then we're going to come on and we're going to super glue this part in position. Now there's no back and forth on this, so there's no there's quite easy. You've got two little holes. If it won't go in, if you try and do it the other way, it won't fit because they just won't go in the holes. Okay, so it only goes one way, so you can't get it wrong. Even me. So there we go. Let's pop those in. Drop a glue on the top. Drop a glue down the back. Okay, quite important to get this one level as you put it in because it has got a little bit of a sideways movement. So we're just going to glue that in. Okay, push down firm. Have a look, make sure it's all sitting nicely. Okay, let that dry off. J14 is going to go on the front, which is going to make the front of the actual, or the rear, I should say, of the actual bay. So we can let those dry. And what this is going to do is make up the actual centre section for what the cockpit is going to attach to and everything like that. Okay, so what we can do now, we can put together the interior of the cockpit. 
So what we've done, we've got a few bits out. So as I said, we've put this front part on the actual main frame, if you like. And what we've got here is the back of the seat is going to go in now. You could paint all these separate and all the rest of it, but purely for sort of speed of build, just put a bit of glue in there like that. What we're going to do is put it all together, spray the inside. Okay, let me sit that in. Touch of glue underneath, it always goes. And then what we can actually do is sort of bring it together, paint it all as one, and then pick out all the little details. There's a few things we're going to do with that. So what we can do is we can just glue this seat section uh, onto the back and that is going to sit at the top here. So what we do, we just do this part in here, plenty of glue. Sit that in, do the little foot to the rear, sit that in like that. That gives us our normal sort of seated area. What we'll do is we'll pop a bit of cross here. So this is the navigator or observer's seat. Okay, what we've done, we've put together the actual instrument panel itself. So you see you've got the little feet on there as well for the rudder pedals are done and it's the back housing goes together in one same thing again we're going to put it on and in a moment what we do is put the deck on when it comes to it so we don't put it together so we can spray it all interior green and then what happens is this then is going to fit just onto the front here a touch of glue just going in here sits in just like so, and gets us in just like that. Okay, nicely done, and then a bit of a wiggle to make sure that's in firm. We've also put the seat together, so actually what we've got here is two little armrests just go on the side, they're done in as well. So then what we can actually do is start to fit this on. So the front part, we just put plenty of glue down in here, flood the area, okay, and then this front part, it's just going to line up in this gap. If you can get a hold of it without dropping it. Okay, so that's one's in there. The other thing as well we can put in is the uh, little instrument dial. Let's just check its location on the rear bulkhead. And this one's going to fit in just here. On the back there. No glue needed for that one. Okay, so we've got the boxes to go on, but obviously the boxes we'll put on afterwards. But we will pop the seat in, because we'll be able to spray around that. So what we do, we just put a tiny bit of glue just on these here. And that will fit in and push back. Tiny bit of glue just down at the back. Bit of a nudge to make sure it's all in. And there we go. So that one's taken care of just like that. In the meantime, one I've done already, and one I haven't. So if we just cut out <coughs> the front part of the cockpit, because obviously the way this is molded is that the fronts are interchangeable with different variants. So we've got the main part here, then what happens is this is just going to lock in just at the front, just like that, and obviously on the inside. Trouble is, and depending on how much you want to look at it, if we bring this one in a little bit, you might be able to see we've got some ejector pin marks in this. A couple of ways to do this, you can sand them out, and if you've got something like this little tool, which is quite handy, which is just a, a nail file system, you can get in and we can smooth them out very, very quickly. If you haven't, then a nail file will do just as well. So if we just get these in. Get these in.
just like so. Then if you take quite a smooth file, you should be able to just come along and polish them up a little bit, just to make them a little bit nicer inside. Once you've done that, which is, we're just gonna show through. Once we've done those and you've smoothed them out, what you can actually do then is come along like we've done here. And all we've used is a little bit of Mr. Surfacer, just like this one, we've used the 1200, um, or you could use the 1000, that particular one we used the 1200, but you could use the 1000. Come along and all we've done is paint it in, brushed it in everywhere, nice on, let that set a little bit, and then I popped another bit, thin 50-50 with cellulose thinners, into or lack of thinners through the airbrush and sprayed it on and that way has got rid of all the scratches caused by the things and made us perfectly smooth on the inside again quick pretty straightforward way of doing it so that's that one done so what we can do now clear some of this away get the paint out and we can get the internal works of all this done and the insides of the actual cabin areas and things like that sprayed green